two dorms on campus are facing some problems. ELN investigated. It's good to be for you to be from Sanford here, and you know, we, we're very proud of you. And later in the show, we met the support group behind Elon's star football player. First, everything you need to know for Thanksgiving 2012. I'm Katie Merrigy. And I'm Steve Roth. Elon Local News <laughs> starts right now. Thanks for joining us. For one dorm on campus, these cold temperatures mean more than just an extra layer of clothes. Our Katie Moulton found out more about an issue that's heating up. Picture this. You're walking home from the gym. It's cold outside and all you want to do is take a nice hot shower. For residents of third floor Virginia like Danielle Williams, that's not a possibility. But it has been, it's been weeks now where we, it's just been a really, really cold bathroom, no heat. Students living in Virginia have gone without heat in their bathrooms for a week. Virginia is a suite style dorm and that means two rooms are connected with the bathroom. And for Williams, opening the bathroom door means letting the heat from her room escape. From getting ready to go to class in the morning to getting ready to go to sleep at night, the bathroom is a spot that college students use a lot. And that's why these Virginia residents say it's so important to get the problem fixed. Williams says work orders have been given to physical plant, but there's been no answer. It is frustrating because, you know, we are paying a decent amount of money for room and board uh, staying in these dorms and, you know, where's that money going? When we walked through Williams' bathroom, it really was as cold as she said. Our radiator doesn't work, so it's always cold in here. But Virginia isn't the only dorm affected. Students in Sloan and a few of the Greek houses have complained about not having heat. However, their problems have been recently fixed. We reached out to Physical Plant, but they were unavailable for an interview. In an email, they said they will look into the problem. Katie Moulton, Elon Local News. If you're having problems with your heat, contact Physical Plant at 336-278-5500. And across campus, the boys of Smith are having a different problem. Sky Cowens has more. They're around to keep you safe, but for a few Elon freshmen, campus security keeps them on edge to the point of transferring. Most directly, I'd say I'm deciding to transfer because of Elon's policies with their strictness and how they treat students, uh, especially freshmen. You know, it's hard to feel safe when you have campus security, RAs, and just the administration in general trying to crack down on you and get you in trouble for reasons that at other schools wouldn't be an issue. David Friedlander and his friend Michael Dellen will leave for winter break and not come back. The boys say almost 50% of third floor Smith is thinking about doing the same, mainly because of extra security. It definitely puts everybody on edge. We don't feel very comfortable, whether it be going to the bathroom late at night or just walking around the halls freely and just saying whatever you want, which is really something that you'd be able to do in your home, and they kind of like took that from us. I spoke with the Associate Director of Residence Life, Marquita Barker, to sort out the issues. So unfortunately, this semester in Smith, we've had more vandalism and more um, behavior that warranted a, a greater presence of campus security. So they you know, did more rounds and um, just kept an eye on things. Marquita says instead of transferring, the students should talk to Residence Life about their problems with Smith. I would say that those students should go talk to their assistant director of the area or maybe come to Residence Life and talk to one of us because we certainly don't want them to feel uncomfortable by campus security being there. I mean, that's they're there to help those students, um, not to make them feel uncomfortable. Sky Cowens. Elon Local News. Changes are coming to the Burlington Police Department, and our Alex Rose has the story. Four years and $500,000 later, the Burlington Police Department is updating their technology to the 21st century. As you know, VHS is going obsolete. So, with new technology coming out and going digital, uh, we, in about 08, decided to start transitioning. They're adding multiple cameras, microphones, and digital video in hopes that the police department will provide better coverage of any crime, chase, or citation. And we have uh, tested and evaluated the 4G card and the officers did not want to give it up because <laughs> they're pulling information so fast. It's like, please let me keep it. Information technology has designed hotspots throughout the city that give 4G coverage and quicker videos from the cameras in the car to the police's server. There's a wireless upload with two hotspots on the back of the 
police department headquarters building where the cars can upload wirelessly to the server and then we automatically on our computers have are able to view that. I decided to check out these cameras firsthand. The camera right there. And you can't see it, but there's a mic right up here. And as soon as this door is opened, lights camera action starts right away. But the technology isn't the only addition the officers like. They also got a nice upgrade for their cruisers. This one hugs the road, so it feels it, it, it feels better, yes, grounded. The rest of Burlington Police's marked 102 car fleet will be upgraded by the end of January 2013. Alex Rose, Elon, Local News. This new technology will allow the police to do any work they used to do in their office from inside their new cruisers. One Elon student thinks she may be the subject of the most recent Smith-Jackson email. Junior Hannah Knobloch claims a red SUV stopped and yelled at her at the same time and place mentioned in the Smith-Jackson email. The email, which was sent to the entire student body, said someone verbally attacked an Asian student with a racial slur. But Knobloch is not Asian, she's actually Hispanic. She couldn't hear exactly what the driver said, so she can't tell if the email was about her or if she was yelled at by the same driver. Knobloch says the driver didn't look like an Elon student. She also didn't report the incident, but looking back on it, she wishes she had. I'm, I mean, it just really concerns me that this happened in the first place. I don't, I don't, I think it's really sad that people can be this ignorant. Um, and I just also, I feel bad that I didn't report it now, even, when, even if I didn't think it was anything I should have. Knobloch also says it may be possible someone else reported her incident without her knowing. Elon Local News will continue to follow this story as it develops. If you know any more about the victim, you can contact us on our website. There's another Smith-Jackson email in your inbox. This one is about drop ad for classes. But some Elon students are still thinking about pre-registration. Kimberly Wisniewski has a problem. Now, next semester, I only have one communications class, and also for my minor, my business minor, I can only get one class. She can't get into most of the classes she needs. Wisniewski is a junior, which usually means earlier registration. She says that isn't the case for her. I came into freshman year without any credits from high school. I took an AP class but didn't get credit for it, so I'm always at a disadvantage because the students that came in with credits obviously picked before me. Elon's registrar, Mark Albertson, says that students with these problems have options. You do have a situation where you have to take particular courses in order to meet the prerequisites for the next semester's courses, etc., and you've been locked out, then there's no question you should go to the, to the chair of that department. And so Unfortunately for communications students, it's not that easy. Uh, the School of Communications is an accredited program, and so we're constrained not only by uh, accreditation guidelines, but also by laboratory space in terms of enrollment for writing and production uh, courses. As of now, Wisniewski is still graduating on time, but it means taking classes out of the order that she wanted. For Elon Local News, I'm John Bowden. Didn't get into the class you wanted? Well, don't worry, there's still Drop Ed. It starts the Thursday we get back and ends December 3rd. Look at On Track for more. Coming up, football season may be over, but we sat down with one player who's hoping this wasn't his last time on the field. It's not yet Thanksgiving, but some are already getting in the Christmas mood. Thanksgiving break is only one day away, and as you head home for Thanksgiving, we want to save you some money on your ride home. Here's this week's Pump Patrol. The cheapest option in town is at the Quality Station on West Webb Avenue at $3.21 per gallon. Your next option is at the BP with gas at $3.24 a gallon. And finally, gas at the Marathon on Haggard and University Drive will cost you a little more at $3.25 a gallon. Your Thanksgiving dinner doesn't have to pack on the pounds. Our Joe Bruno has the healthy options for this year's big meal. Thanksgiving's almost here, Elon, and that means you're going to have to make some decisions on what you have to eat. Let's take a trip inside so we can play Eat This, Not That. Now, this French onion soup is a popular Thanksgiving appetizer, but if you put down the French onion soup and pick up some butternut squash soup, you're going to save 211 calories and 10 grams of fat. And when choosing stuffing, you're going to want to go stovetop over Betty Crocker's. You'll save 150 calories and 14 grams of fat. And 
how about this big turkey? Well, you only want to eat three to four ounces of this and only the white meat, no dark meat, and you'll save a lot of calories and fat grams. Cream of mushroom soup, french fried onions, cut green beans. These are the traditional ingredients for a green bean casserole. But you're gonna wanna put back these cream of mushrooms and french onions and just go with the green beans. That'll save you 64 calories and 11 grams of fat. And for those of age, if you need an alcoholic beverage with your meal, you're gonna wanna go with the wine over the beer. The wine's filled with antioxidants that will make a great supplement to your Thanksgiving dinner. 15 grams of fat is the difference between cheesecake and apple pie, but if you have to pick for dessert, which one are you going to choose? Well, you should go with the apple pie to save you 189 calories. There you have it, a traditional Thanksgiving meal, but a healthy Thanksgiving meal. We'll have a full list of tips on our website, elonlocalnews.com. For now, in Lowe's Food, Joe Bruno, Elon Local News. For athletes, Thanksgiving isn't the only time to watch what you're eating, so Elon Athletics hired Heather Colloran, a sports dietitian. She hopes by giving grocery lists, nutrition guides, and keeping up with the coaches' pre- and post-game meals that we will see a healthier and stronger program. Colloran shared some tips on staying healthy and active. Not enough uh, carbohydrates, being carbohydrates are the fuel that all athletes need to, uh, for performance. Um, I think not drinking enough water to so the hydration so they're not maybe as hydrated as, a, as they should be. And then just generally not eating enough. Some students are preparing for that Thanksgiving turkey with some fun and exercise. More than 300 runners ran and walked the 21st annual Campus Rec Turkey Trot. Instead of a fee, students and staff donated two canned goods to Loaves and Fishes. Campus Rec's Shelby McKay told Elon Local News why she enjoys being a part of the team. That was just another fun event that everyone comes out to a tradition, running with the turkey and then getting their turkey trophies at the end. And it's a good 5K that um, people will be able to use and it's for free and they can practice with it and everything like that. Thanksgiving is a time to remember the 50% of the world that Oxfam International says can only afford to eat one bowl of rice a day. To promote awareness about the problem of world hunger, Oxfam at Elon hosted a hunger banquet, showing students how food is unequally distributed around the world. More than half the students had only a handful of rice for dinner, while the rest had a three-course meal. Emily Kane is the co-founder of Oxfam at Elon, and she wants to show Elon students the problem of hunger. When you're talking about like fighting world hunger and injustice, it's a pretty big thing to take on. So a lot of the work we do is raising awareness about these issues because something that I've seen a lot is a common misconception about hunger and people thinking that hunger is caused because there's not enough food in the world. But really, there is enough food. It's just an unequal distribution of resources. Coming up on Elon Local News, another good cause to get you into the holiday spirit. We've been talking about Thanksgiving break, so let's talk about the day after the big feast, Black Friday. Julie Morse is in the studio with tips on saving when you think you should be spending in this week's College Consumer. Dinner is over and that means it is time to shop. Whether you wait until Friday morning and go at midnight, I have tips on how you are going to save money. It's a concept we all use for papers and projects, but let's take our research skills and apply those to our shopping. If you want a flat screen TV, re research where you're going to find it the cheapest. It takes a few minutes, but saves you a lot of money. Once you're done with your research, so you can make a list and stick to it. It's the holiday season, so it's only appropriate to make a list and check it twice like good old Santa Claus. Make a promise to yourself. If it's not on the list, you're just not buying it. This way, you'll avoid those impulse buys that you don't actually need. Afraid you can't stick to the list? No problem. Take out the cash. Figure out exactly how much you'll need for your purchases and withdraw exactly that amount. And leave those credit cards at home. Now you can only spend what you planned. Having the cash in your hand will also remind you just how valuable it is. And don't spend all of your money on Friday. We can't forget about Cyber Monday. It's the day you shop online for the best deals before the holidays. Last week I told you to avoid online shopping, but for Cyber Monday, we'll make an exception. And sticking with the technology theme, a new app, TGI Black Friday, is loaded with deals and even separates all the deals into sections. Let's say you want some new electronics. There are sections dedicated for tablets and TVs. For all those attempt attempting the 5 a.m. doorbusters on Friday, good luck, good savings, and looking out for the college consumer, I'm Julie Morris. 
While you're out getting those deals, you can pick up something for Operation Christmas Child. Our Janae Frazier has the story. You look around here in the United States, I mean, we throw you know, things away that other people would consider literally treasure. Michael Stevens believes it is important to give to others, so he gives his whole family to help out with Operation Christmas Child. I get like 20 toys each Christmas, so we should like give stuff to other kids and people. And his wife Misty says it's important for her children to get into the giving spirit. It's easy to get real selfish and what am I going to get and we want to try to get them raised up right and the way we do that is showing them. You can ship a box filled with simple things like toothpaste, socks, and candy. Close it up and ship it to a child in need for just seven dollars. They're going to be more excited than our kids that are going to get hundreds of dollars worth of toys and they're getting a shoebox. We're just so blessed that they, and they don't have anything. You know, they, most of them don't even have clean water and things like that. So, I mean, this, that little box that we make, which is like what trifles to us, is their whole Christmas and it, it just makes a, such a difference in somebody's life. The Stevens family may never meet the children they are helping, but they want the kids to know one thing. They're special too. Janae Frazier, Elon Local News. If you want to get involved, visit the Samaritan's Purse website. The holiday spirit is right around the corner, and for those already in the holiday spirit, an outdoor ice skating rink just reopened as part of Winterfest and is $8 for both admission and skate rentals. The rink is open seven days a week and will remain open until late January. The rink attracted about 30,000 visitors in 2010 when it first opened. It's been quite the season for Elon's men's soccer team. We have one star player live in the studio for a recap on the season. Also in sports, we went to the Phoenix Star wide receiver's hometown to see where his legacy started. Check it out on Road to the Pros next. Welcome back to Elon Local News. It's time for sports. After winning the SOCON regular season and defending their title as SOCON tournament champions, the men's soccer team took on Coastal Carolina in the first round of the NCAA tournament. The Phoenix fell to CCU earlier in the season. Let's see how they did this go-around. Coastal's Taylor Lemon gets control of this one and sends it over to the top of the box where Pedro Ribeiro sends it airborne into the right of the goal. One zip shot to clears. That wouldn't be the end of Ribeiro as he boots this one in 2 nothing. Coastal Carolina continues to apply pressure as Justin Portillo's Kick is helped by Matt Risher's head, redirecting the ball past keeper Nathan Dean. Coastal Carolina wins over Elon 3-0, thus knocking the Phoenix out of the tour NCAA tournament. Well, right now we have Chris Thomas here in the studio. Chris, it's an honor to have you. You led the nation in goals scored this year. Looking at those highlights, it's got to be tough to see as a great season comes to a close. Uh, it's very tough. Uh, we, just, we had a great team this year, and we uh, just got an unlucky drawing in the NCAA tournament. Played a great coastal team that uh, I give a lot of respect to, and we knew it was going to be a battle. And sadly, sadly, we couldn't get the result, and we got really emotional at the end. Yeah. Talk about the emotions also as being a senior and looking back on the past four years of your college career. Uh, it's, it's just really sad because you look around the locker room and you see you're not going to be able to be with these guys anymore. Like, we had our mm -hmm. end of the year meeting today, and it was, uh, I couldn't believe it was going to be one of the last times in this locker room. Well, another step forward though, Chris, MLS soccer, is that in the future for you? Uh, I definitely hope so. I've, uh, I've been talking to Darren, our coach, about uh, a lot of possible agents that uh, are interested, and mm -hmm. ho hopefully we can get my name out there and get a, a land a contract somewhere. Chris, abs absolutely, all the best of luck to you in the future. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. From one star on the field to the next, Naima Abdullahi is in the studio with the story of one football player trying to make it to the next level. Thank you, Jimmy. It's a field where you're praised for a bone-crushing performance, where pathfinders and playmakers are cheered on by the crowd. Senior Aaron Millette has a glow of determination that shines brighter than his helmet, a dream he's had since he stepped on Road Stadium. This is his story on the road to the pros. Time flies. Seems like just yesterday, his two-year-old son took his first picture with the football. God was actually setting him up right there. Give it up for Aaron Millette. 
it was just very tough, and it was, and it was hard to to grasp just how tough it was until the game was over and I'm back in the locker room. The journey ends at Road Stadium, but it all started at Southern Lee High School in Sanford, North Carolina, where the coaches took notice of the raw talent. But we knew instantly when we saw Mr. Millette that, okay, we got a keeper here. He's left a footprint in his hometown of Sanford. It's good to be for you to be from Sanford here, and you know, we, we're very proud of you, and especially proud enough to have these gloves right here. His father says his success on the field comes from family and faith. You keep God front and center of everything that you do in life. He can make all this happen. Millette's athleticism and dedication to the team is visible to just about anyone. Aaron Millette has put so much time into Elon University, and you can see it. He ends the season with 18 touchdowns, totaling his career at 44. He ties the record for the second most touchdowns caught in one season in the Southern Conference. Millette says every ball caught had a story. I catch it, everything's happening so slow, but on the field it's really bang, bang, real quick. He set a new Elon and Southern Conference record last year with 1,639 receiving yards in one season. All of this makes him a top wide receiver prospect for the NFL draft. I definitely think he had the talent to play on Sunday. No doubt about it. You know, he's a big kid that runs well. He catches the ball well. Making it to the next level comes down to science. The NFL scouts that come through here have everything on a stopwatch, and they know what works and what doesn't work, and sometimes that's a split second. What keeps him grounded is his teammates, high school coach, his community, his grandfather who never stopped believing in him, and his proud father. I've never been to an NFL football game. Never in my life. Seen it on TV. I always wanted to go home. I probably won't be able to describe it once that day comes. Touchdown! Phoenix! ...have already started reaching out to him. Millette says he'll factor everything in before making any decisions. Stay with us for a future update on this story. Jimmy? After a home win against Colgate on Saturday, the men's basketball team played in the championship of the EA Sports Maui Invitational Regional Tournament. Let's get to yesterday's championship highlights against Florida Atlantic. Here you can see the dish to Stefan Moody who lines up for the jumper and look at this guy's ups, absolutely incredible. This ball is trickling around, bodies are flying, Riley Beaumont gets control of it, flicks it to Lucas Troutman, he trouts down the court with one option to slam a jam. Troutman is, Troutman is excited and so is Dr. Danley in the crowd. This at the end of, end of regulation, Troutman with the floater, it doesn't fall, 48-48, off to overtime. Enter Jack Eisenbarger in his hot hands. Not one, not two, but three tray balls in overtime. Again here, the crowd electric. One more chance for FAU, but they run out of time. The Phoenix get the Maui Invitational win. And here's Coach Matt Matheny on the excitement of a tournament W. We celebrated in the locker room because we won a, a, a tournament championship. Um, and that gives our players confidence. That, that is something uh, our program hasn't done since, uh, somebody just told me, since 1995. And um, uh, it's a great honor to be affiliated with the Maui Invitational. Uh, and it's a great honor to, uh, to be a champion of the Maui Invitational. After the men's win, the Lady Phoenix took on the court to face off against UNCW. That's Wilmington. Now here going in the second half, the Phoenix were in the lead by seven, but the Seahawks were not going down without a fight as they battled back with just more than five minutes left in the game. Not so fast, just like the men here, the Elon women rallied late in the game and went on a 14-2 run to beat the Seahawks 67-61. How about this? After suffering from an ACL tear last year, Sean Redmond scooped up 10 steals on the night, tying the Elon school record for steals in a single game. Appreciate it. Guys, it's a sad day at Elon Local News. As tonight, we say goodbye to our co-anchor, Steve Roth. He's a senior. We just wanted to thank him for all that he's done. It's been an incredible journey. and We've loved having you. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. That's all we have for this Elon Local News. For continuing coverage of the stories you care about, follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. And as always, visit our website, elonlocalnews.com. From all of us here at Elon Local News, have a great and safe Thanksgiving break, Elon. <laughs>